Before we start this episode, I want to send a special shout out to the customer reviews I have uh, right now on iTunes. Thank you to Nick Dasso, uh, Lilies or Lilies, I'm not sure, and Steph757. Thank you so much for your um, reviews uh, and your ratings. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And I hope I continue and continue to provide value. Please reach out to me on Instagram um, if you have any questions. Welcome to Do It For The Gram, an Enneagram podcast with your host, certified Enneagram coach, Milton Stewart. Here we do it for the gram, not Instagram, but the Enneagram. We make moves to improve our lives and the lives of others in our community. Today we are continuing our series on cultivating healthy relationships with each Enneagram type. Each type tends to have a pattern that is detrimental to fostering healthy relationships. We are talking about all relationships, but mainly adult relationships. That means your spouse, girlfriend, boyfriend, friends, and your crazy relatives. Intro music, run it. be discussing the type five throughout this episode i'm going to drop quotes for the enneagram type five now you have to remember for the type five they're in a thinking head fear center of intelligence the archetype is the investigator or the observer they're always watching love only grows by sharing you can only have more for yourself by giving it away to others Brian Tracy. Creating space for fives. Fives create their own space by creating boundaries and distance. They really do. But in order to create space for a five in your life, you have to respect their need for alone time to recharge. It takes a lot of energy for fives in social events or prolonged social interactions that are not something that they are interested in. Also, respect that a five is a private person, so being intrusive with fives will not go over well at all. They will shut down the conversation and leave if possible. Do not overshare personal information about them or others because that makes them weary of trusting you. Building trust takes time with fives. They are highly, they highly value their time and energy. So they want to make sure that you are worth it. Do not rush, force, or push fives into activities that they do not want to do. It just does not fare well. You can encourage fives though. When fives are in relationships, they actually are very talkative. I mean, when they get to talking about something they are interested in or that stimulates their mind, They can really go on and on and totally forget about time. This can be tough for a person listening at times because they can talk at length about subjects they are knowledgeable of, but it is actually an honor because they trust you enough to spend an extended amount of time and energy with you. So part of creating that space is being patient and listening and really appreciating what they have to say because I guarantee you it's something that they've researched, they've studied, and they know about because they're speaking about it. When fives are able to uh, speak at length with you, this is when fives really trust you. But fives need help experiencing emotions in real time. Fives are very heady and can get trapped in their heads only thinking of their idea of logical patterns. This can sometimes lead them vacant in the feelings, emotions, and heart area when life becomes hectic in the present moment. I'm not saying they don't feel them, but in the present moment, a lot of times they do not they do not integrate their emotions into 
what they're doing. They need someone who can help them access emotions when they are ready and let them express them as needed. If they really trust you, they may get to a point where they can access their feelings in real time in balance with their logic. How to speak their language. You need to be clear and have clarity when speaking to a five. If your statement is not clear or does not make sense to them, they will drop their favorite word, why? Followed with a question. They prefer directness and to talk about meaningful topics to them. Similar to threes, fives do not want tons of emotions being communicated. So make sure if you express emotions, they are not for an extended period of time. Sharing more thoughts than feelings is appreciated as well. Asking really good questions about intriguing topics definitely gets fives going. And also asking questions about something they are knowledgeable creates some good camaraderie with fives. And do not ask many personal or piercing questions because they will, they will be met with a true resistance. Courage is like a habit, a virtue. You get it by courageous acts. It's like you learn to swim by swimming. You learn to courage by couraging. Does your workplace stink because the culture sucks? Are you tired of tolerating people and wish you could all work together cohesively? Does the mere idea of going into work give you anxiety? If you say yes to any one of these, you should probably quit your job. But since you're not going to quit your job, you should contact Kaizen Careers. At Kaizen Careers, we are all about improving workplace performance. We use a unique tool called the Enneagram. The Enneagram helps individuals and organizations become more self-aware. That self-awareness lends into helping organizations with communication, conflict management, and leadership development, ultimately turning self-awareness into self-mastery and creating healthy workplace cultures so you can improve your services and bottom lines. Contact Kaizen Careers at K-A-I-Z-E-N-C-A-R-E-E-R-S.com or Milton at KaizenCareers.com or give us a call at 901-334-1644. Good vibes. These are the types that fives usually mesh really well with or just easily on the onset. This includes nines, threes, and sixes. Nines are good vibes because they don't pressure fives and are independent thinkers. They can challenge fives thinking in a good way. Threes do not require a lot of emotions or attention from fives because they are both quite independent. Fives also help threes learn how to retreat from the intrusion of the world. Sixes loyalty is highly appreciated, though a double dose of anxiety can be troubling at times for fives and sixes. What we know matters, but who we are matters more. Sandpaper types. These types tend to not mesh as easily onset, but also remember, any type, any type, long as they have worked on self-mastery and growth, can mesh and work with any type and have relationships and have good, long-lasting friendships and relationships. But off the top, some relationships can be difficult based on certain factors, personality factors. Sandpaper types four or fives include fours and twos are the most sandpaper of the types for the five because they are overflowing with emotions and fives can be on an emotional drought in communication. So twos and fours typically overvalue emotions where a five typically undervalues using emotions. One of the most important things that you can do on this earth is to let people know they are not alone. Shannon Alder. Avoid. Avoid being intrusive into five's life. Whew. Seriously. They'll let you know what they want you to know. Because that will be met with quite a bit of resistance, maybe even a shutdown. Avoid telling five's personal information to others. Avoid. Avoid. 
avoid, no, I'm not stuck in repeat mode, but I'm just saying this is serious. Avoid surprises. It shocked the mess out of me when I realized when I realized my mom's a five and she don't like surprises. As a seven, I love giving surprises when I'm trying to show someone appreciation or like a birthday. It's like, yeah, let's do a surprise. I'm going to, no, none of the surprises I did for her growing up, she said she actually appreciated none of them. Um, she, she loved the gesture. She loved the thought, but she didn't appreciate any of the, the surprises. Please avoid surprises for fives. Fives do not like them. Also, avoid creating overwhelmingly emotional situations and massively chaotic, disorderly um, situations because that definitely bothers fives in the worst way. Hopefully you have found some value in this podcast episode. You can help to keep this podcast going by supporting us on Patreon.com. Patreon.com is a site where you can support content providers. Podcasts are free to listeners, but not free for creators. It actually costs money and definitely time to produce consistent and weekly podcasts. I podcast because I want to reach people and change our community through the Enneagram. If you want to help in that by supporting me, you can go to patreon.com forward slash do it for the gram. That is P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com forward slash do it for the gram. Conflict. When in conflict with the five, make sure to give them some notice that you want to meet and discuss the conflict. Allow them to set the time. Allow them to set the time. I'm going to say it again, okay? Because it's very important for them to have time to prepare. This ensures they are prepared to discuss the conflict. Allow the five to get out their feelings and thoughts completely. Give fives physical space as well. Do not be physically close to fives when discussing conflict. Remember, they like boundaries, and physical space is one of them, especially when communicating conflict. Your emotional intensity needs to be low when in conflict with fives if you are going to have a positive outcome. Also, focus on some kind of rational outcome. Knowledge rests not upon truth alone, but upon era also call jung at their best at their best fives understand how to show their feelings and emotions to the one they love they use their knowledge and ability to research to help those they are in relationship with make good life decisions they are very supportive and protective in relationships fives understand the power of spending time energy and stretching themselves some for the ones that they love because they know the benefit of spending quality time unless you try to do something beyond what you have already mastered you will never grow ronald osborne at their worst at their worst they are super isolated stubborn and selfish with their time and energy stuck living in their head and disconnected emotionally from others and themselves people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care Theodore Roosevelt and John Maxwell you made it this far and have not already taken the Enneagram test here are a few that I trust you can always go to kaizencareers.com forward slash Enneagram and scroll to the bottom for the quick two question test based off of the Russ and Rizzo's quick test. The second one I trust is Eclectic Energies. It's another free test that has about 30 or so questions and can be pretty accurate depending how self aware you are. The next one I trust is the Enneagram Institute for a more thorough test that will give you possibly your top three types. You can go to EnneagramInstitute.com and the tester has a minimum cost but it's pretty accurate. Last but not least, I trust the Integrative 9 test. This can be found at Integrative9.com. This test is one of the most expensive tests, but I believe it to be the most accurate and gives a ton of information based on your type. It includes personal life, but really shines on how your type performs professionally. Tips and tricks for Enneagram 5s for healthy relationships. So this is going to be coming from Susan Stabile's The Path Between Us book, where at the end of each chapter, she gives some things that we can do, we can't do, and some things we just have to accept in life. 
All right. You can survive being seen and known before you are completely ready. So, in relationships, you're not you can't prepare for everything. Fives, you like to research, you like to be competent, you like to really know what you're getting yourself into. But a lot of times, a relationship, it's not completely, obviously, logical, completely rational, completely practical. There are some things you're just not going to be ready for. But in a relationship, that's just a part of it. You can survive it. You have the tools to navigate it. It may not feel comfortable, but you definitely can navigate the situation with the tools that you have and the brain power you have. You can have lasting relationships. You can have lasting friendships that are filled with soft and subtle experiences of familiarity. So, a lot of times, fives, they really only engage with people if it's something they are deeply stimulated by, somebody that they definitely know, there's like a real, real connection, and so they have those few people. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, but... A lot of times for fives, it can be isolating because they can only really want to invest their time into those relationships, which is okay, but you need to invest in a little bit more than just those two people that you trust in this world. There's so many more people, so many more experiences, and so many more friendships out there that could be helpful and beneficial that you can grow from, that you can learn a lot of knowledge from. You can find measured ways of being in the world that don't deplete your store of energy. So for fives, it's important for you to find some ways to engage with the world that do not completely deplete you as well. That may not be highly social. The first thing that comes to my mind is if you just go to like a park and play chess with someone or some type of activity like that. It's, It's creative in a sense. And it's social and it's with other people, but it doesn't require you to do a whole bunch of necessarily talking or fluff or uh, flattery type talk. It just it does have a purpose, but it has something like that. So maybe like something that is purposeful that you can do that does engage you and doesn't deplete you, but it also gets you engaged with other people. You can be in an intimate relationship without risking more than you can stand to lose. So for fives, what people don't understand a lot of times is that when fives choose to be in relationships, they're giving up something that is so huge to them. Their time and their energy is so valuable to them. They really value those things more than most other types. And so It is very serious and something that they are very serious about if they're giving up that time. So for fives who really struggle with being in an intimate relationship because they're afraid of giving up some of their um, most intimate things in their life and things that they really appreciate and value, you have to give it a chance. You have to take the risk. Because I promise you, if it's a good relationship, if it's an intimate relationship, it's going to be fulfilling as well. And so it's going to fill your cup back up. It's not just going to completely drain it. But you can't live your life without needing help from others at times. Sometimes you just need help and you're going to have to be able to admit it. You're going to have to be able to reach out to other people. And that's just a part of life. Don't get stuck in the whole prideful, arrogant, overly self-sufficient thing as if I'm a person on an island because you're not. You need help just like everyone else needs help. You may be a little bit more independent, but allow other people to help you just like you're able to help other people. Get yourself out there. Push yourself out there. Gain some help. Sometimes doing research and information for yourself is not always the best way sometimes you need other people who have the experience and who can give you a real world experience on what that experience or what next steps you need to take but you can't be competent in all areas of life all the time the need to learn is not incompetence it's inexperience so 
that is a shift in mindset that a lot of fives you have to work on. It's not necessarily that you're incompetent because you don't know something. You're just inexperienced. You just you don't know because you've never really experienced it or researched it or touched on it. And so you don't have to feel complete or whole only if you have the knowledge. You're complete in your whole regardless if you're competent or not. Right now you're just inexperienced. And obviously you have the tools and skills to be able to get the competency once you have a chance. But not but fearing that incompetence makes you less valuable is not right and that's unreal. But you can't have healthy relationships without risking giving up some of your time, letting go of some of your privacy, and finding a way to offer and receive affection. Ooh, this real right here. So, in order to have healthy relationships, five, you've got to get to a vulnerable place with someone. You have to. That's the only way that you're going to actually be able to create intimate and healthy relationships. Relationships are risk. There's no doubt about it. But they are also some of the most fulfilling, the most gratifying, the things that make life worth living a lot of times, you know, those relationships. So there is going to be a risk and you do have to give up some of your privacy. You do have to lessen some of your boundaries in order to actually have a healthy relationship because you want a person in a relationship who can unconditionally love you just like you want to unconditionally love someone else. They can't unconditionally love you. If they don't know you and so allowing some of that privacy to go especially in those healthy intimate relationships is going to actually bring a stronger bond and make for a healthier relationship remember you already have a boundary you have a trust meter you don't just let anyone in and so the people that you have let in that you do actually trust allow them a little bit deeper into your life because amazing things can happen in really healthy relationships. And also the last part, fives, you have to find a way to be more affectionate and allow people to show you affection and to show affection. To some fives, it doesn't come natural to show affection, even though in their head they may want it, but it's in their head. It's not in them actually doing it. And so you're going to have to get out of your head some and get into your body And that may mean different breathing techniques. That may mean different mental techniques that I work with people on, on how to get into your body. They may be doing something exercising. They may be playing, but a way to get into your body so that you're able to be affectionate with others in relationships. Because it's important to to a lot of types and a lot of people. And touch is so important, period, to our human lives. So being able to do that is so important. But you can't know everything. So you'll need to accept that relationships will require more or less from you depending on the seasons of life. You will have to give more in midlife than you will be required in the final third of life. And because of grace, you will have what you need. So fives, a lot of times the mindset you're operating on is a scarcity mindset of energy. And... A lot of times it can be so draining to feel like, can I do this? Do I have enough to do this? And you do. You really, you really do. You plan well enough. You organize well enough. And it's deep down inside of you for those healthy relationships and those things that you have to do, even though it may drain you, you have it in you to do it. You really do. My mom talks about that as I was growing up. As a five, a lot of stuff depleted her. We grew up poor. A lot of stuff depleted her. But she knew in order for us to make it, that she had to do a lot of different things that she didn't want to. She had to sacrifice things. She had to be places. She had to go places. She had to do things. And to, in order to make sure that I grew up in an environment that was conducive to me actually learning something positive and being around good role models and doing things that expose me to uh, healthy um, thinking and healthy relationships and healthy community, she had to do a whole lot. And so it required so much of her as a five, but she had it because those relationships and the people she loved drove her to do those. It conjured up extra energy 
that she could do these things and go out of the way, even though it was so draining many times. So you'll need to accept that although you value thinking over feeling and doing, that is not true for many of the other people in your life. In order to connect with others, you will have to work on a balance of your thinking with some emotion and action. And so fives, yes, you think a lot. You think a whole lot, okay? But the thing is, when you're talking about actually connecting with people, you're connecting with some people in these different areas. You're connecting with people who are action-oriented. They're just like, got to move, got to do something, got to move, got to move now, got to do it. And they're always doing, they're always doing. But then you're also working with people who live life and see life through the perspective of feelings and emotions. And so you got to be able to balance your own in order to connect with them and not just think they're crazy, that don't make any sense, that's illogical, that's irrational, I don't know why they would do that. Well, the way that they see life, that's the reason they do some of the things they do. So being able to strike a balance will help you to connect in your different friendships and relationships. So you'll need to accept that the outer world has value that extends far beyond gathering information. So yes, fives have this affinity for gathering more information. They love it. It just, you know, it scratches a perfect itch for fives internally. But you got to remember that the outer world doing things beside gathering information has so many va- has so much value to it. And so you got to make sure that you engage in that as well because that's going to be extremely helpful to you. And you're going to gain so much from it. And you're definitely going to gain information because you're always seeing patterns. You're always taking in information. But not the act of specifically gathering information, but of actually engaging in all of these things that you may be researching or looking up. Engage with those in real world, in the outer world. And it's such a rich experience for you. So you'll need to accept relationships can't always be on your terms. The needs of others are as real and pronounced as yours. So you have to remember, too, because fives are so good at setting boundaries, almost a little too good at times. And the boundaries are super thick as well. And so that's one thing that you really want in relationships. You want it a certain way. But you got to remember, when you're coming in contact with someone else in a relationship, they want things the same way you want things. The way you like your boundaries may be the way they like to really get to know someone intimately very fast or the way that they have feelings and emotions that are so explosive. It may be the same way those things are as primary or as as important as your boundaries and your privacy is to you or how you think a relationship should go. So you're going to have to work and strike that beautiful balance between each other. And that means communicating those idiosyncrasies, how you see the world, and kind of coming together and saying, hmm, I have to compromise because you're just as important as I am. And so I must respect the way that, that I must respect the things that you bring to a relationship as well as the things I bring. Let's find a way to strike a beautiful balance so that this works together and this relationship can grow. So for the fire, that's going to mean you stretching yourself. That is, a lot of times relationships, for fives, you're stretching yourself because you're using a lot of energy and time, which you value and you sometimes have a scarcity mindset. And so you have to really work on that, okay? Well, besides that, that's all I have for today's episode. Thank you so much for listening. Please subscribe. Please subscribe. Please subscribe. Um, And I'm saying that because I'm having a beautiful amount of listeners are growing, but a lot of people haven't subscribed yet. They're listening, but not subscribing. Subscribe so you can get the update um, as soon as it comes out. Also, make sure you um, follow me on Instagram at Do It For The Gram Podcast. Um, you can talk with me there. I engage with anyone who's ready to talk Enneagram. Um, I absolutely love it. Reach out. Also, you can subscribe to my website at doitforthegrampodcast.com. There's a free gift if you subscribe there. Also, if you need one-on-one coaching, I do Skype coaching. I do typing. And I also do consulting. So so if you need coaching, please contact me 
at kaizencareers.com, Milton at kaizencareers.com, that's M-I-L-T-O-N, that's Milton at kaizencareers.com. Also, I do consulting, and so if you know organization, if your organization needs uh, some Enneagram help with workplace performance, trying to get along better, trying to get their culture better, trying to work together, contact me. I can definitely help you out, and that number is 901-334-1644, and that is Kaizen Careers number. You can also go to my website at kaizencareers.com, and you can reach me also at milton at kaizencareers.com. May 2nd, I have an event coming up in Memphis. It's called Enneagram 901 Presents the Intro to the Enneagram. I'm doing um, a nice event trying to create a community around the Enneagram in Memphis. Uh, it'll be light refreshments. It'll be a kind of a connecting, networking, educational event. I will be there, which will be great. I'm excited. Um, and so if you're able to come to that, that's great. You can sign up online at eventbrite.com. It's also on Facebook. Also, don't forget to go to the Facebook page and you can get the updates and episodes there. And besides that, I think that's all that I have today. So, fives, when you are feeling like you want to be completely secluded, isolate yourself, put up these boundaries where people can't get to know you, though you do want a relationship, but you're creating a boundary, remember, step back, rethink that, make a smarter move. And do it for the gram. The Enneagram, of course. See you soon. Bye.